This is a PETA A1 stationary engine. A lot of people seem to have trouble getting the timing right on these engines or getting them to run. So I thought I would do a quick video to give you a bit of an idea of how to go about setting them up. Uh, the problem is with the magnetos which are either a Y-pack mag like this one or a Yco version which is similar slightly different shape it's got a black plastic end on it normally a Yco model A both of these types of magnetos have a mechanism in them for automatic advance and retard of the spark timing which basically means when the engine is turning over slowly or being cranked over the spark comes later than when the engine is running at speed when the engine is running at full speed the spark will come earlier i.e. a little bit before top dead centre the way to find top dead centre is to look at the keyway on the pulley or on the flywheel if you've not got a pulley on top dead center is basically when it's exactly at the bottom there when the keyway is at the six o'clock position that is top dead center of the engine so you would mark the flywheel at the very top or mark it at a convenient point you don't actually have to mark it at the top if you don't want to I normally mark it where that bolt is there and that would indicate the engine is at top dead center now what you need to do is to get the magneto to click like it just did when it is at that top dead centre mark or very marginally before that top dead centre mark that you would put on that flywheel so engine is now at top dead centre there you would spin it round until you hear it click and it clicks there which is hopefully as you can see I'm at a funny angle because it's not that clear but as you can see that is at top dead centre again now when the engine is running at speed you won't hear that magneto click but that top dead centre will come a little bit earlier so as the engine spins that way around it will actually be at top dead it will actually click somewhere around about there so a couple of inches before and of course you work that out with degrees on the on the flywheel and that's what it tells you in the handbook where where the spark timing should be but what confuses people is when they are setting the timing up static as the engine is now they get the click with the top dead centre mark over here so a little way before top dead centre which makes it difficult to start it's likely to kick back at you and then when the engine does start to go at a decent speed the spark ends up way around here so there's no chance it's going to run so you want it sparking when you're turning it over by hand actually at top dead center and as I say the way of finding top dead center is by looking at the keyway here and you need it to spark when the keyway is exactly at the bottom the way to adjust the magneto 
is you take this whole assembly off, do not rotate the magneto, and then rotate the engine a little bit, um, and put it back, and it's kind of trial and error. What I do, I set the engine to top dead centre on the flywheel, take the magneto off, spin the magneto, when you take it off you'll find a drive gear in here, spin the magneto in my hand until it just clicks, and then the moment it's clicked, don't rotate it anymore, but carefully put it back on the engine. And then you should have your timing set to top dead centre. And that basically is how you time a Petter A1. Another thing to note about stationary engines is getting the right spark plug. I've had a bit of trial and error with Petter A1s and different spark plugs and I have tried a number of different plugs, some of which have worked okay, some of which haven't. But this is the one I'm using at the moment. As you can see, it's got a fairly long thread on it. And it's an NGK plug, model number BP6ES. I believe this particular model of plug is still available from car spare shops etc so that's the one that we're going to use right just to prove that i'm not lying about the timing and the plug we'll start the engine up and here we are with the engine running you can probably hear it's not running terribly smoothly there's a couple of reasons for this one i've got a bit of a rubbish hp lead on it at the minute made out of bits go out and get some more HT lead but you can see the governor is actually working the engine slows down that governor lever when the engine slows down pulls out this way so towards the camera that gives it more air and more gas and it then picked up again. The speed increases and the speed increases a little pin over here pushes out which pushes the top end of this governor car that way which closes off the carburetor so the engine slows down again. So you can see the gear is pumping a bit on the governor at the moment which is exactly what it should be doing. Now there is a slow running screw around here and that slow running screw can be adjusted to even out the kick over. You'll pull it up a bit and that will even out the kick over. But I've not got that far on this engine yet. As you can see this is an unrestored engine um, but it was fairly complete when I got it so I thought I'd try and get it running before I actually did the restoration. It's quite a nice one because unlike many Petri ones, it's still got the original fuel filter on there. The main jet here, which is adjustable, is to set that up, you screw it right in, so turn it clockwise, screw it right in. Don't really force it though, just do it sort of finger tight and then open it up between one and a half and two turns normally and that should be set about right at that stage. Remember this is a bit noisy as well because it's not got an exhaust on it. When you put an exhaust on, the back pressure from the exhaust will very often even out the running a bit. But as it stands, just for getting it going, I think this engine's running quite well. So that's the basics of how you set up and time a Petter A1. If you've got any questions, either make a video response or leave a comment and I'll get back to you and I'll try and answer them as best I can. 
Also, join us online at spaceintheenginesforum.co.uk and I can try and answer your questions on there. Okay, thanks for watching.